do you think are the, the top concerns for people who are thinking about starting testosterone or when people ask if they should, what are they most worried about? You know, what, what is concerning people the most once you talk to them about it? Because, you know, we, we talk to a lot of people about, you know, starting treatment, but a lot of them seem to have the same worries. So, you know, what would be the, the top ones and uh, what would be something you could tell people about whether those top concerns are true or not, or myths or legitimacies to them? Sure. Um, well, the, the main concern I get from anybody when it comes to starting testosterone replacement therapy is um, uh, prostate cancer and prostate health. Um, so in the early days of testosterone replacement therapy, um, they basically did some research on um, you know, whether or not testosterone replacement or testosterone in general puts you at, at greater risk for developing um, prostate cancer. Um, and there was a study that uh, essentially, its conclusions were that yes, it does. But um, retrospectively looking at um, that data, uh, it was flawed. And so additional studies were done and um, better studies, longitudinal studies, um, uh, and ultimately it's been essentially proven that, um, testosterone replacement therapy does not increase the risk of prostate cancer. Um, there is some debate still on if you currently have prostate cancer and I start you on testosterone replacement therapy, does it make it worse? Um, there's still some debate in regards to that, but, um, uh, most men you know that start trt therapy um are usually you know maybe in their late 30s or 40s 50s uh whereas prostate cancer tends to be bimodal meaning you either catch it really really young like it's a just an odd you know you're you're in your early 20s or you catch it um 99 of the time you catch it when you're in your 70s or 80s so um it's not often that we're treating testosterone replacement, um, or I should say it's not often we're initiating testosterone replacement um, in men that are at risk for prostate cancer. So the rule as it stands now for um, like uh, testing um, prior to initiating um, TRT is that um, a PSA, which is a blood test, uh, is no longer uh, the standard of care prior to initiating. So you don't need a PSA test unless you've had a history of, of prostate cancer. Um, and that's one interesting thing too, is uh, the American Neurologic Association has changed its stance. Meaning if you've had prostate cancer in the past and they've treated it, you can use testosterone replacement therapy. Um, so that just goes to prove that no, it, a TRT does not really seem to make, um, doesn't create prostate cancer, nor does it make it worse. Um, and the second issue I hear often, um, or concern, I should say, uh, for people wanting to start TRT is about heart health. Um, you know, basically, the thought process for a long time was, um, well, men get heart attacks more than women, and men have more testosterone. So, you know, A plus B equals C, people trying to do algebra were, were basically saying, because men have more heart attacks than women, and what separates men from women is testosterone, this is the cause of their heart attacks, testosterone. So they thought, well, if we're going to give them more testosterone when it's starting to lower, you know, it's going to put them at risk for heart attacks. Um, and, you know, uh, essentially the data never really proved that, though it was, um, there was one very poorly done study that said there might maybe possibly possibly be uh, uh, increased risk for heart attacks. And because of that, it was on the black box, on the actual box of testosterone that you would get from the pharmacy, they listed that as a risk. However, uh, again, as you know, science, you know, changes as you know, COVID proved to us that, you know, science changes literally every week, because we get better studies, better data as we had better data, we found that um, uh, 
Uh, in fact, not only does testosterone not increase the risk of heart attacks, it actually reduces the risk of heart attacks. And um, uh, it, it, it actually reduces the risk of overall death from anything by 30%. So it, it meaning comparing a, a guy with low testosterone versus a guy with normal testosterone or um, the guy with low testosterone is gonna, is has a 30% chance more of dying of anything, meaning heart disease, diabetes, you know, um, stroke, anything. So what we know now is that um, testosterone replacement therapy is cardioprotective, uh, meaning it reduces the risk of, of heart disease. Um, it actually um, seems to improve LDL cholesterol, which is a risk factor for heart disease. Um, it does seem to have a detrimental effect on HDL cholesterol, which is a, a good type of cholesterol, but not enough to um, uh, counteract the, the beneficial effect on the lower LDL. And then um, it's been shown to improve cardiac function in patients with congestive heart failure. And again, this always made sense to me. It's like, when do men get their heart attacks? Not when they're young, when they have good testosterone levels, right? It's when they get heart attacks when their testosterone levels drop when they're 60s and 70s and 80s. So it totally made sense to me, um, you know? And so obviously the energy levels you get as well help you exercise and get out and do, be active, which are always great for your health. Um, but uh, the last... Um, concern I get from patients when it comes to um, starting testosterone replacement um, often actually comes from the spouse, um, but it's uh, the concern for increased aggression or, you know, roid rage, um, you know, and that I, I can understand that concern mainly because, you know, we all watch the after school specials <laughs> um, and that was kind of the main thing. Um, that uh, we learned from those is, you know, you're going to ruin your life because you're going to get in a fight and, or you're going to, you know, um, nobody's going to like you anymore because you're, you know, just a dick, right? <laughs> um, so, um, roid rage is, uh, um, it can occur with, with the illegal types of steroids, I would say, sure. Um, but TRT is not illegal. And it is a naturally occurring substance already in your body. So what you inject is already in your body. Just it's low, right? That's why you're starting the therapy. Um, so if you were to take one of your, um, the one of the, um, some testosterone that you naturally produce and then some from the bottle and look at them under, you know, electron microscope, they are exactly the same. So that's one thing to remember is they're attaching to the same receptors and all that. Um, so it, um, there is no such thing as roid rage on TRT alone. Um, I would say there is a risk um, for people um, having maybe some shortening of their fuse a little bit. Um, it seems to be that actually that tends to be related to an excess of estrogen, um, which can be a concern with TRT if, if you aromatize, which basically just means, um, you know, your body converts some of the excess testosterone into estrogen. Um, uh, it seems that uh, that tends to make men more emotional if it's um, at a certain, you know, level above normal. And that can be variable based on the patient. But um, uh, I certainly in my own practice of treating patients with TRT, those that do you know, complain of aggression or issues with being more emotional or, you know, short tempered, um, uh, oftentimes adding an aromatase inhibitor um, to prevent that conversion uh, from testosterone into estrogen seems to uh, resolve that in most cases. So those are the three main, you know, concerns I, I, I hear from, you know, patients that want to initiate therapy, but um, it is remarkably safe. Um, you know, for your heart, for your prostate, for, you know, for your mental health, all of that. Um, so uh, I rarely um, uh, would tell a patient that not to take it. There's only a few instances, you know, where we don't recommend a patient start TRT therapy. Um, you know, some, some people who have um, risks for um, that, 
you know, um, producing too much red blood cells or they've had a history of leukemia, things like that, you might need additional testing. But um, beyond that, it's, it's safe across the board. 